everyone it's a dose of dr drew it is uh we're on the restream and we're also over on clubhouse uh and rosh Kasfili showed up hello there uh interestingly um yeah we hope the chat is calm today we will not have all (laughs) the uh trisha paytas folks here today (laughs) uh yes it is nice music thank you rayvon for that rayvon owens rayvon owens uh listen um (laughs) david metzler liked the after dark where i was using my x-ray vision thank you for that david um, and so uh, oh, yeah, it's a weird afternoon. It, it's midday. We promised we would do a little check-in today. We're only going to go about 45, 50 minutes. And I went out on Locals a minute ago, and literally nobody showed up. So I went out again, and still nobody showed up. Yeah, that's not working for you. What isn't working for me? The the live stream on Locals. I It's not it's not really working. Okay. I mean, it's nice that you do that and somebody shows up, but it's I, I think you have to advertise it in advance, and then, you know, everybody needs to know. But... I don't know. Okay. It's just, it, it's not it's not sinking yet. Okay. Ashley has a question about natural immunity. I'm not quite sure what you're asking there, Ashley. Go ahead and ask the question. I'm happy to answer it. Uh, and uh, Bloom said he did not get the notification. So I, that's what I was wondering, if the notification didn't go out. It I didn't notify like anybody today about this one. Uh, but I didn't, I don't know if my notification went out on locals. That's another thing. Oh. Uh, Ethan says fluoxamine ruined his sleep. Yeah, I had a little, little weird sleep change with fluoxamine. I got to say that was probably the only side effect I had, but it wasn't, didn't bother me. Um, but you can do that for sure. If it made you feel better with your long hauler, I mean, be thankful. Uh, it will go back to normal, of course. Do we know how long natural immunity lasts? Um, not really, although I was watching uh, some tweets from uh, Dr. Uh, Kelly Victory this morning, and she was saying that she has knowledge of people who got the 1918 flu who are alive today who are still immune to that flu. And uh, <laughs> there are a lot of similarities. My suspicion is that some people are going to stay highly immune and some people are going to decay uh, in over three to six months. I think taking the vaccine is not a bad idea. Uh, oh, Ethan says it did help long haul. Oh, didn't help long hauler. Okay. And now you wake up every night at 3 a.m. And you're still taking the fluvoxamine? Doesn't, that doesn't make sense if you're not taking it. It'd be hard to blame the fluvoxamine. Are we allowed to say fluvoxamine on yes. YouTube? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, we can't see the I word that people are bringing up on the stream. Yeah, we're not going to. Um, don't even write it. Over. Am I following what we're doing in Florida monoclonal antibodies? Eric, I absolutely are. And when that started, I was applauding it. I was standing up and applauding. The idea that your government is doing their job of, of advocating for the deployment of monoclonal antibodies and educating people about how important it is and funding it, it's fantastic. Okay, I have I, a question. Wait, I would just say there's one other thing that needs to get done, which is we need to also have subcutaneous monoclonal antibody for people that have known exposure. What's your question? Okay, so is Regeneron uh, the original monoclonal? It was the first approved, and it's two different Is that the one antibodies. you had? No, I had bamlanivimab, okay. which has reduced efficacy now, so they've added etisivimab to it. Uh-huh. And Regeneron was already two monoclonal antibodies. Okay, so but because it's called Regeneron, they're, we're getting pushback from the newscasters, right? You know, my little fight with them. Um, with um, Don Lemon and his histrionics of, of using... No, no, no. He was saying that... I, I interpreted it different than yes. you, but I want to hear your take and on David, that. And David, the score, go to adeticscore.com, one word. Um, it, he said that, oh, if you're so upset about putting something foreign into your body, why are you advocating for monoclonal antibodies? He was being glib. He was being sort of silly. Yeah, but he had that side eye thing, you know, where he just looks in the camera. Tennessee's doing it too. Tennessee's doing it too. That's great news, Stephanie. Thank you for I that. I mean, I thought that it was going to make people not want to get the, the <clears throat> treatment. And it, and it kind of made me mad. It was kind of a medical, medical misinformation. Well, it, it could be interpreted that way, and you interpret it that way. So well, because, yeah, so I mean, he's here, got so much question. power, and he's just dramatizing stuff that Tom's he should cigar is just glass in it. Just glass. <laughs> great. Um, I have a question for everybody, and I want people to help me on this. I really do want some help. So I've been watching the evolution of the research on a medication you've heard me mention on this stream before many times called molnupiravir, which is a repurposing of an HIV medication. It looks, there were act, in the studies that are out so far, there were actually less side effects in the molnupiravir group than the placebo group. So it is a benign medicine. And they've been in a phase three trial in like 15 countries or something, or maybe more than that, 
Why can't they finish it? Somebody help me understand why they can't finish that clinical study. I personally would love to carry that medicine with me. If a, me or anybody around me got sick, I would take it immediately. It will change everything. All of this breakthrough stuff, we can stop it with a therapeutic. Now, it has one, one uh, shortcoming, which is we know that these viruses are, they do develop the resistance to therapeutics, and so something's going to give. So we'll eventually have to be using two agents. But in the meantime, this could change everything. What is taking so damn long? Don, does molnupiravir, M-O-L-N-N-U-P-I-V-I-A-R, molnupiravir. What the hell? Uh, That's a big word. Well, and it's a, Never heard it's of it. been used for a long time, and it's out there. And please help me, everybody. Uh, let me see if George Clark can help me. We're so there's like 10 Clubhouse. people on uh, Clubhouse. Yes. If anybody wants to ask a question, George. raise your hey, hand. Hey, George, what's oh, up? Oh, there's George. Hey, George. Uh-oh. Did you have that up, Susan? He's up. Yeah, It sometimes it takes a minute for them to get it. No, he's, he's there with his mic off mute and everything. Huh. Hmm. Is it plugged in? Volume is up, plugged in. George You're plugged Bola. into the right one. Yeah. Is the plug plugged into the yeah, other yeah, one? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe it's on George's end. Andrew Ashkazvili, that is very interesting. Um, I can't talk about those things because, because YouTube, YouTube will put me in YouTube, YouTube jail again, again for the last time. time. Um, um, George, George, I have you up. Is the volume on your phone? Up? Volume is up. I'm going to move you to the audience and bring unplug you back. Unplug it in and plug again. it back in. Okay, I'm going to plug it and plug it back in. I'm going to move George back, and I'm going to invite him to speak, that is. Uh Unplug and plug. I think it's at your end, Susan. No, it's George, not try again. Because I heard it plug. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it's George. Is you? Are you on mute, perhaps, George, or something on your phone? Not so much. Uh... Bring Joshua up. Let's see if his works. All right. Oh, George. George Joshua's here. Uh, here's George Jonathan. hung up. Jonathan, maybe it's his shoot. Thing. Jonathan. Let's see. Bring him up. Uh, Jonathan. Hey, hey, Doc. Can I ask a question today about blood platelets? Sure. Um, I got a physical about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The platelet count was mildly low. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what the cause of that might have been and if it might have been related to using some Aleve on a pretty regular basis about for the, about the about 10 out of the 20 days before that test. How, how old are you? Uh, 41. Okay. So, and by low, like 130,000 or something? Yeah, I think it was 120. Okay. That's enough to, you know, trigger a note, but yeah, I bet it's transient. You should get it re repeated in six weeks or something. I mean, you could be developing a common condition called ITP, immune thrombocytopenia purpura, but other than, unless you're a heavy drinker and your platelets are sequestered somewhere. So the, the three, you know, the common things are medication, sequestration, consumption. You didn't get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, did you by any chance? No, I did not. Yeah. Two Pfizer. Because that has a little consumptive quality to it. And then something suppressing the bone marrow, like medication. So I think I, I, if I were a betting man, I would say medication. I think you're right. But you do need to follow up because there can be other things that do that. Yes, I'm, I'm going on the uh, like 1st of September, but I really appreciate it. All right. Don't worry about it in the meantime. Unless you start, unless you start seeing little like red dots you know, uh, under your eyelids or on your lower extremities, keep an eye. Or if you're bleeding easily, that kind of thing, then immediately follow up. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm looking out for that. All right. Take care. Uh, George, you're in there. Are you with me? <laughs> George, it's clearly on your end because I just <laughs> talked to Jonathan with great clarity and uh, there were no problems. Um, I see your mic is on mute, my friend. Uh, let's see. Sorry, Nothing I buddy. can do on my end to improve. Yeah. Hello. George, Yay, George. What's happening? Yeah. Every time I'm on my AirPods, for some reason, it intermittently cuts out. Um yeah, so I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on the booster thing? I am happy to take a boost if it'll make the vaccine more robust over time, but the messaging around it, like again, from again. the beginning, was not good. Yeah, I agree with you. Again, they 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 just it's they can't get it. It's my weird. Don Lemon, Lemon was reporting. No, it, it just yeah. Mm. Ugh, God, makes me crazy. Um, hold on a second, George. I want to uh, respond to somewhat on the stream here. Is it controlled or un uncontrolled RNA chaos? Um, Sam Adams, Molnupirva has nothing to do with RNA. It's well, an RNA virus that it treats, but it itself is a medication that is not an RNA medication. Uh, okay. So uh, I am in favor of, I mean, clearly people need boosters after six to eight months, right? Um, there yeah. probably is a, 
There may be a more sophisticated way to do it, uh, like things like additic scores and whatnot. And um, of course, they're not. They're not, of course, giving us any information or other alternatives or more. They're continuing to take this weird approach that public health should be this one simple message that we all say over and over and over again, which is what's making everybody paranoid. Um, but I do think, um, yeah, I do think it is an important thing. The question really is. What about people who've had COVID? Of course, they're not discussing that. That's another nuance that needs to be addressed. Should somebody who's had COVID, who had the vaccine, need a booster? Probably not. Probably not. But I can't prove that. Again, I, if I were treating somebody, I would get a, a complete antibody screen and see where they're at and maybe follow that every few months. And if the neutralizing antibody started to fall, I might, I might do it then. That doesn't mean they're not immune, by the way. It doesn't mean... I want one. Uh, you want, yeah, Susan. I'm going to get her a, a, a follow up. But uh, I'm waiting for my doctor to say it's okay. Well, you're going to get one. Uh, I mean, because you, she had, uh, she has no reaction to the vaccine. She's, you know, yeah. we just, I just don't want her to get it. And uh, my attic score did not. I drop, think I have to actually. wait till the end of September, though. Right? My attic score has remained up after the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. I'm still watching it. Um, they've not yet made recommendations on what the J and J population should do. And as I said, I'm still begging for them to go to full FDA approval on the Can on I the get mRNA an vaccine. score? Uh, I can, yeah, we can purchase one for you, sure. Uh, I can draw the blood. I'd be interested. One. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Have I? Please then I'll know one. if I need a booster too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kristen, I, I have reached. I will reach out to Ethan. Thank you for that. I mean, I don't have underlying issues, so. No, you do not. Uh, I think if I got COVID, I'd probably live. Yeah. I wouldn't want to have all the weird side effects, though. That's for sure. You mean the, the long hauler stuff? Oh, my that, God. I mean, yeah, that was fun. I don't want ringing in my ears. Uh, oh Susan, my you got Pfizer, right? I'm, I work in tech. I don't you care. got Pfizer, correct? Yes, I did. George, do you have any insight into this Moldapiravir research? Did you hear what I asked earlier? Look yeah, at I mean, I have. I mean, I don't really have any insight because I'm not. Uh, I'm not a, a medical professional at yeah. all. Yeah. But. Um, uh, if it does turn out to 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 definitely help, and then is that the Pfizer one or is that the Merck one? It's a, the Merck one. P Pfizer has one too. They're a little further behind, but I'd like to oh know my. about that one too. I mean, why isn't there a project uh, warp speed for therapeutics? I mean, they should be out now. They should be out. Why not? Uh, I mean, I agree with you, especially with the like you said with the breakthrough stuff. Yeah, it becomes would, an non-issue. It, oh my God, yes. It would be real. I mean, therapeutics is really the final stage of this whole thing, right? Where we have effective, we have d decent vaccines, we have effective therapeutics. I mean, this thing becomes just a, you know, another common medical problem that we can manage. But um, I, in the meantime, I am, st I, I, I guess the administration has their eye off the ball. They're busy with Afghanistan. But if I were president, I would put together another project warp speed. I, and I have a feeling there's something of a kind of legal nature or something getting in the way of this finishing the research. They're almost there. They're almost done. Why the hell can't they finish it? I don't know. The government's actually bought the medicine already. They bought like a billion doses or something around the world. This has happened. And yet they can't get the final approval. What the hell? What's going on? All right. Thanks, George. No problem. All right, buddy. Yeah, Susan. Just a quick thing. If you if you have a lot of ambient noise behind you and Drew's talking, just mute your mic. He did. So he we, did do that. He was no, I know. That. Just just so you guys know, because it's like, whee, whee, whee. Okay. It's just, so it <laughs> I like your ambient noise sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hi, Doctor Drew. Hey, Chad. Hang on one second. Andrash does really sure. adds an interesting <laughs> question. How can they recommend a third shot with no trial? Um, Andrew, there's a lot of things. It, what look. I don't believe that randomized placebo control trials are necessary for all medical recommendations. And the fact that the CDC is recommending a follow-up vaccine without that RCT, um, I don't really object to that. I think the better part of Valor, based on the available information, is to go ahead and recommend it. They do have a vaccine that's about to be fully approved. Could it cause more problems than not? Yeah, it could, but I think that I think it's a reasonable thing to do. However, they need to also <laughs> do that with many, many other things. Uh, they need to, you know, let doctors do their job, which is what's been driving me crazy. 
uh, ever since this thing started. So I don't, I, my, for me, to, you know, again, I'm philosophically consistent. I don't believe you have to have RCTs for everything in an emergency like this. But damn, <laughs> they pick and choose where they apply their their uh, philosophy. Chad, what's going on? Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey. I just I just have to tell you this story really quick about uh, this virus that's going around upstate New York. It's like an upper respiratory thing. I don't know if you guys are dealing with it out there. No, I but heard I heard respiratory syncytial virus was going around. Is it an RSV? I I don't know oh, because, because I can't get in to see my doctor. doctor. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, I've had the same doctor for twenty years. My son, my wife, everybody goes there. Yeah. Um, and now with the new COVID restrictions, I guess I can't see my family doctor. Why don't you try so to do I, a telemedicine visit with him or her? Well, what what. They don't do telemedicine at my family practitioner, so I had to go to a different clinic in order to do that. But that's okay. what I did to finally get better. But this Good. thing, my son has gotten this thing. This is his third time now in a month and a half. Hmm. And he has asthma. And um, this thing is like hanging on and and rolling through my house. And we okay. constantly clean and they have air filters and the whole nine yards. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and the one question I wanted to ask you was, are PCR tests any good still? For COVID, yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, can see because, you mean you mean rapid tests? Yeah, the rapid is that what you're talking you about? Yeah, yeah, the rapid, yeah, yeah, rapid tests. Yeah. yeah, PCR is very good. The rapid yeah, they're tests good. Are still they're, good. They have them at the CVS now. Like it's brilliant. The Abbott Labs are really good. But, but here's what I hear. That's what we use. I, I hear that everybody's getting what's called post bronchitic bronchospasm, and that you, is, and that be, is exactly right. Yeah, and because your kid has asthma, he's really predisposed to it, and it's harder to break it. But you need to talk to, you need to ask your pediatrician if he should see a pediatric pulmonologist or an allergist or something to really get this thing under control because it can it can linger man and it can cause him a lot of problems yeah this has just been it's been non-stop i have asthma myself oh and we kind of treat the same yeah and so we've i mean i've never had a bronchitis like this in my life never it's hung well, on for a month so well, drew do you think happens. maybe because we haven't been getting viruses that we're like our immunity's a little it's an interesting question susan i can't answer that in any kind of scientific way i but mean it's, it's a great, good to have a runny nose every it's once a great in a while. question it's a great question but 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 chad and his and his son have a special problem which right. is asthma right and, right and it and this this particular virus has set up some inflammation and then their airway reactivity clamps down and then that causes more inflammation you have to break that whole cycle i'm, I'm guessing steroids are in your future that's what i'm guessing yeah i've i've been on two doses of prednisone twice and mm. now i'm on uh what it's a prednisone that starts with an m it's a methyl prednisolone yeah, and that has actually brought me back about. Good. I'm about 85 percent right good. now. All right, good, so good. And and one more question, just about yeah. the J and J booster. Yeah, they're authorizing it here in New York for us to get a booster. Oh, interesting. Should, should we? Should I go for that? I got mine in March. Should I my would, wife and I go? So March, April, May, June, July, August. You're still good. You're still fine. I I would take the time to wait till the CDC okay. gives formal yeah. recommendations on that. Okay. Yeah, that's what we thought. Yeah. Thanks so much. Right, I appreciate you. Good time. to talk to you. Yeah, you bet. Uh, excellent. Anybody else have any questions? You raise your hand. I'll bring you up to the uh, podium here to ask questions. But you will be streamed out on multiple platforms at that time. Just a uh, fair warning. Your whole be, life will be uh, yeah, YouTube, open book. Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and there we go. Uh, I'm seeing people. A lot of people talk about still talking about yesterday's show, which uh, I understand uh, had pretty good ratings. Yeah, the fans, new, new the uh, Ethan Klein and the uh, Trisha Paytas sure really fans people, are but... are a wild. That's the kindest word I can say about them. <laughs> um, I will reach out to Ethan and see if he wants to give his perspective on his relationship with Trisha and and, and his fans as well. Uh, so, okay. Uh, Greg Scott, let's admit the mRNA vaccines are toxic. Uh, they're not toxic. They are dangerous like every medication, but they are worth the risk. They're worth the risk. Uh, let's see. Par paraded doctor there saying vaccines weren't preventative against future variants. Well, I had my vaccine in January, so I'm kind of coming up on the date. You'll be coming up in May. Uh, yeah, you're you're you are coming up on need for. I know. I think you should get one for I know. I, and I'm for surprised. travel purposes. But. Absolutely, and you need to uh, push on your doctor to maybe get a. Uh, I know they just came out in the news. They're going to give it to people that had pre-existing conditions. So n you need it. 
Uh, and so, all right, yeah, I'll I, text I, him again. I'm a little less uh, clear on Jordan, who got very sick after the he's had COVID and got very sick after his first dose of Pfizer. I, I'm gonna let his doctor make a. Now is the is the booster gonna be the same as the first one, or is it just yeah, a little it's lighter? Same. It's the same now. Mm. Um, in terms of somebody's asking about the Lambda variant, uh, yeah, Lambda variant does appear to be worse than the Delta, but not as contagious. So we'll see. Uh, oh boy. No, Harley, I would not worry about telomere uh, length and that kind of thing. Okay, we have other questions here. Let's get uh, Brandon up here. One second, Brandon. I will try to get you going here. Sorry Brandon. we didn't tell everybody we were coming. but uh, Coming up in May. Uh, Hi, uh, Brandon. Hi, can you hear me? Gotcha. Awesome. Thanks for having me up. You bet. Hey, so uh, I was listening to Peter Hotez yesterday, and basically the conclusion that he had come to was uh, – that in order to achieve really long-lasting immunity from these mRNA vaccines, the ideal scenario would be to space the doses further apart. Yep. And that's why we're seeing the need for the booster shot. Yep. Um, so do you agree with that consensus, I, have I guess? Seen, that... I have seen suggestions that eight weeks between vaccines may be a better way to go. Um I don't disagree with him. I just don't have a strong position on it. Uh, uh, I, again, I, I don't understand why the CDC doesn't catch up with that. Again, they will not give you the, the nuances. They just refuse to do their job, which has always been to advise doctors about the complexities of an infectious disease landscape. Instead, they're out there chanting things that people don't trust because they've been so non-transparent. So uh, I have no problem with people, they want to wait uh, eight weeks. I, I've had people do that. I allow them to do it. I have no problem with it. The data looks like that may be more optimal, maybe longer, possibly. And that's been something that's been in the literature for quite some time. So you know, let, you... let's put it this way. At very least, you could delay the need for the booster another month or two. Sure. Now, do you think, based on what you're seeing, do you think we're going to see see some really lasting immunity now after you know if people are getting the third booster shot after eight nine months if if um, i were you know do you think yeah. we're gonna see if i were guessing i'm just guessing my guessing guess is no i've sort of always felt that there would be a need for booster vaccination uh, uh i'm, I'm a little surprised that they didn't try to make the boosters more specific to variants but I think their feeling is, based on their reading of the science, that just getting the antibodies back up again will be adequate for the variants. We'll see. We will see. Uh, the, the great fear is that eventually this virus is going to figure out a way to get around the vaccine altogether, and that will not be good. But I don't think we're there. Uh, and, the, and the most significant way to reduce that risk is to reduce viral replication. So it's not, it's not that... <laughs> take on the sort of vaccine uptake rate i mean i think the 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 grand idea was to achieve a, a level of herd immunity would yes. be to get to a critical mass vaccinated yes. within about four months that's I right think was you know there, there is, ideal so. i know they not even close so so there is a, there is a school of thought that the way to get to some sort of herd immunity, I'm not saying this is just so, but there's, you'll see this out there, that everybody's going to need to get infected, or at least 70, 80% of people are need to get infected, and that our goal should be to reduce the experience of infectivity with vaccine <laughs> and therapeutics. My guess is they're not talking about that yet because they haven't rolled out the therapeutics yet. But that I think I think do you that think would vaccine be, is a is a black bald word on YouTube? I don't think so. Are you sure? I don't know. I think it might be. It's seriously, the word <laughs> vaccination. I know it because say vaccine anymore. Oh no, I don't. I think it might be a. Oh yeah, you have to call it the V word. Okay, well the V word. Jesus. Oh, okay. Oh we'll say God. V word. That is <laughs> insanity. <laughs> Yeah. So I, if so this is I, our last strike, I just want to tell everybody at, at YouTube, you know, we'll be it's been Rumble. great. We'll be on Facebook, you can find us there on Twitch. Uh, We're available on Rumble. We're available on Twitch and Facebook uh, and Twitter. V for the C. Somebody's saying you got to get the V for the C. Um, but, uh, v for the Co. Let's put it that way. Um, 
But my God, what country do I live in? What the Taliban Dude, I, was right? Do I get banned for that? <laughs> the Taliban was pointing at our social media and saying, "Who? Yeah, who, don't who, write. Who at for, don't for, even for, write the word. Doing? Don't yeah. even write the V word if you're the, on, the on YouTube." The Taliban has a higher moral standing than we do for our behavior. Or the Z country. word too. The Z word. Oh my God, came where, do I, where am I living? It's incredible. <laughs> I mean, the Taliban could stand out there and say, with great, uh, uh, with accuracy, and say, hey, look at your own social media, how they're censoring people. Are we going to be that bad? Probably not. So, the Taliban, they I don't know if that. you should re- use that, that. Oh, my God. C word either. I don't know. All right. Well, how about the T word? How about the A word of Afghanistan? <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. But you know what? I, I live in a freaking. You can use the F word any time. By the way, we are, uh, we're going to have to write this down somewhere. I know, right? I have to have hold up signs. I, I'm back to being the French underground here in this in this little stream. I, I, it's like it's just this phenomenal. Our, but anyway, our little uh, medical speakeasy. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. So let me. I didn't finish my thought. So the thought I do believe. If, again, if I were betting, I believe we're going to see a day where this thing is really brought under control by having vaccines and therapeutics and letting people sort of live their lives and a large percentage of people are eventually exposed one day and that'll be it. And that'll be the end of it. That's my bet. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All so, right, um, all right. Well, thank you. Appreciate all right. it. All right, buddy. See you, Brandon. Uh, I've got other hands. So here. one more time, if you're in a car driving and Drew's talking, just mute your, your uh, mic. So we don't have the ambient okay. noise in the background. Hey Russ, go ahead. <laughs> Hey, Drew, I had a, uh, a non-COVID-related right. question. Let's I just it. watched your episode with the Booth Boys when you were yeah. talking to Annie about uh, benzos. Yeah. yeah. And do you – I can't remember if you've ever made any kind of recommendation for non-benzo or safer anxiety medication. Is there such a thing? Because I would imagine a lot of people are taking – I know. Benzos. It's, it's our. It's the silent uh, pandemic right now. Is the benzos, and it it was the combo of the opiates and the benzos that was killing people with pharmaceuticals. It wasn't just the opiates until fentanyl hit. Now fentanyl is so so scary. But but uh, yeah. So benzodiazepines are very dangerous medicine. If you're a drug addict, you should not be taking them. And benzos is Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, Ambien, Restoril, all this stuff. If you're not an addict, you can use them for very short periods of time. But even after a few days, you will start to get rebound anxiety on the other side. You'll be urged, you'll be feeling like you need to use more because your anxiety is worse. And now you're in a terrible spiral. The withdrawal from these drugs is horrible. Isn't it super long term if you take it like a lot of people take it every day? Doesn't it take years to fully withdraw? Clonopin takes a year plus. Uh, Xanax, not so much. Xanax is is a quicker withdrawal. But the longer acting the drug, the longer, generally speaking, the longer the withdrawal. Um, and like, you know, methadone takes six months while, you know, heroin takes nine days, you know. So, so, wow. so in terms of what you can use, um, people have used SSRIs all the time for anxiety. Again, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying these are things that can be used. Neurontin is a medicine in moderate doses. Doesn't ha- it's, it has the same receptor system it's working on. In high doses, it can start to behave like a benzodiazepine. So if you can't avoid the high doses, but in medium to low doses, very effective against anxiety. Um, So seizure medication, correct? It was a seizure medication. It was never a very good seizure medication. It's been used for sleep and anxiety and withdrawal, drug withdrawal for the last 20, 30 years. Um, there are other sort of strategies to to sort of, uh, well, certainly for me with anxiety, anxiety has lots of different, uh, contexts, right? There's anxiety associated with depression. So people get agitated, uh, depressions. There are anxieties that precipitate depressions. There are anxieties dealing with circumstances in your life that maybe you need help dealing with. There's anxiety dealing with trauma and PTSD, there's a lot of anxiety these days with sort of inadequate, uh, our parenting function, let's just say, has not been great in the last 30, 40 years. And so people don't have a robust connection with their primary emotions. They just feel anxiety. Uh, anxiety can be associated with obsessive compulsive disorder. So it depends on the context of the anxiety to, to really come up with the best treatment. I'm a big believer in various kinds of, uh, you know, whether it's cognitive behavioral therapy, emotional focus therapy, uh, trauma therapies, if indeed trauma is part of the deal, that you must really get that in there if you are troubled by anxiety. In terms of short term, yeah, you can use the benzos on a very, very short term. 
Somebody's putting it here. Miss Kaylee says hydroxazine is a is a good alternative, and she is absolutely right. That is Vistril hydroxazine. It's a very sedating. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's a very sed- I used to use it all the time. I used to use it intramuscularly to sort of back in the days when people didn't understand how dangerous benzodiazepines were, and they just demanded them. You could get a bit of sedation from the Vistril. It was called. Yeah, Vistril is like a cousin of Benadryl, it's right? Correct. Or it's an one antihistamine. of the salts or something. Antihistamine. That's right. So again, they, you know, Ashley's saying Lexapro. Yes, Lexapro is an SSRI. For some uh-huh. people, it can be helpful. What's the matter? Oh, oh, the <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> the, you know, some of some of uh, the snake people are go, back. Oh, some of uh, <laughs> Trisha Paytas's people have shown up here on our street. Uh oh. And uh, that well, episode me, yesterday was. Like that. What's that, Russ? That was wild. That episode yesterday. Yes. I'm a little older, so I'm not familiar with <laughs> that demographic at all. Yeah, and that, well. it was a very different show. Yeah, as far as I, the and, and I and I've been, you know, I've met Trisha a few times, and I've been on the H three H three pod and stuff, and so it's um, it's an interesting world. That's yeah. all I'll say. I, I'm glad I don't live there full time. All right, Russ, I've got a lot of questions <laughs> I want to get to. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Right, Y'all have a good day. You got it. Uh, okay, let's see. Sherry. That was better sound. Yeah, Sherry's been on hold for a while. Sherry, what's going on? Uh, Sherry's not coming up here. I may push somebody up here if Sherry doesn't come. Well, I'll bring Joe up because Joe has a work, has a work how to work clubhouse. Joe, if uh, Sherry shows up, I may push you aside. But what's going on, Joe? Hello, Drew. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Better. I'm doing better. Hanging in. So, um, certainly one of the things that has cheered me up is that there's a certain um, doctor. Um, uh, his last name begins with a Z. <laughs> is now on TikTok. Okay. Is now on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And he's giving uh, Dr. Knock, uh, which, Susan, now you could promote tomorrow's episode with Dr. Knock. I heard he's um, back on, um, and- on Twitter, too. Somebody. Dr. Z is? Yes, yes. He, yeah, but he'll be he'll probably be off within the next week. You, you know. <laughs> um, he was he was. I listened to him on Alex Jones. It's Alex Jones, right? The, I think that's yes. What it is. Yeah, yes. and he was. I mean, he has some good points. You know what I mean? He was actually being in control. He wasn't like yelling out and calling names, but he was actually very good. But so, Joe, are you saying he's giving Dr. Knock a run for his money? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that would be pretty... Yeah, I think I think he will be giving Dr. Knock a run for his money. Well, Dr. Knock is in here tomorrow, and I will do my damnedest to see yep. if we can talk about it without getting kicked off YouTube. So we'll see. Well, again, ju- just keep using the Z word. Now, now it's funny because... You you could say the F-U word, okay, <laughs> and you probably will be just fine, but you can't say the F-L word without yeah. getting suspended. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, we used that word earlier in the day, so we might get... The, the L word? F- F-L. Oh. Oh, I used the FL. I used that word. I did. I you didn't did. Know that yeah, I know, but see, you um, forgot, Drew, because well, look, we haven't I'm, look, done that's this a medication that I've used for years, and I, you know, I, I know, took it. My, but, whatever. It's an algorithm. Yes. And it's just uh, by the way, I, I, real quick, Miss uh, Dunn. Hang on, Joe. Miss Dunn has a good question. She's asking about propranolol, which is a beta blocker, which which blocks the sort of body manifestations of anxiety, the tremor or heart rate going up or breathing going up. And for some people, that will also reduce their anxiety, but it's not a great anti-anxiety medicine. Go ahead, Joe. I'm thinking considering um, how the, the, the roughness of yesterday, I'm thinking that YouTube should take one of your strikes away. Um, <laughs> I should get combat duty, combat yeah. pay for. for yes. Yesterday. No, you, no, you, you don't. Should. Maybe you've never been exposed to what I've been exposed to many, many, many times. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, that was. Uh, by, by the way, way what's even funnier is that I, I went, went on half an hour before. You know, it, it promotes the episode a half an hour before, mm-hmm. and the chat before was going nuts i know i know they they told us they were going to be around uh this was 30 minutes before we um them, we still have them now i'm looking at anthony rodriguez who's putting snakes up there all over the all over yes yeah, snakes, um, snakes hey mew mew um, asking about seroquel or qt yes seroquel is also something you can use for anxiety but that's sort of a special case if you're getting into zyprexa and seroquel and this stuff you're getting on into more i took all that stuff at one you didn't point. took seroquel mm-hmm. i thought i took seroquel as an antidepressant well, at no, the beginning no you took serazone serazone oh no. sorry yeah. That one is not on the okay. market anymore because of liver problems. Use use Royal Schwartz. Uh, knock it off with the the anti-vax shit. Okay. Bye. Nice to see you. 
Uh, Ms. Kaylee's uh, Seroquel is an antipsychotic, but it, it's used for sedation also and anxiety and sleep, too. Uh, okay. Um, so, Joe, how, how are you? Sound like you're on the road. Drew said... Uh-oh. Yeah, in the next 48 hours, we're forecasted to get a tropical storm or minimal hurricane in the area. I know. I'm, um, I'm going in on uh, Wednesday, so I think it's right after it all passes. Yeah. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Thank you. Um, but, we appreciate that. You know, that. You, um, you had mentioned something at the beginning of the pandemic, I would say back in April and May. Okay. And I believe I'm living proof of it now. Okay. And... It is about the isolationism. Oh my God! And and what has happened during, what happened during the Spanish flu? I believe, and 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 I'm going to tell you right now. I think it's of certainty is happening now with COVID. In what sense? Where people, well, people are frightened to go out. Yeah, it happened during it happened during the Spanish flu. It also happened that a majority of uh, psychiatric syndromes that followed the two years following the Spanish flu and neurological syndromes were from the Spanish flu, which we're now we're starting to see that from long haul COVID, so called long haul. Uh, and uh, Susan, there's somebody on there as me. Look, look on the screen there for me, if you would. That's me. Oh, it's you. Okay, <laughs> downtown That's trash. Fine. Downtown trash asked if it was. Me I and see. I said oh. yes, it's me. Downtown I thought it trash. Was, I, th I thought you were saying yes, it's me, comma downtown I know. trash. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I figured um, you'd see that. Joe, I, I am very. I've been concerned about this from the beginning, and and the reason I I see it so clearly in retrospect, the reason I was freaking out and being as sort of um, excessive with my rhetoric, and that's what got me to trouble, was I could see that we were that we had a press that was demanding we follow the policies of the Chinese Communist Party locally in Wuhan that were not following any medical plan, were doing something they'd either rehearsed or put in place to save face. It had nothing to do with any medical personnel telling them to do that. That was something political. And the fact that we were not listening to the CDC, not listening to Fauci, demanding that we follow the the policies of the CCP, that was, I couldn't believe it. And I knew it would have massive deleterious uh, mental health consequences is what you're pointing out. Yeah, you cannot well, do anything worse than I isolate mean, people. It's the worst for people. Why do you think isolation in jail is the worst punishment? So, you know, uh, isolation I mean, by yourself is... it's something that I'm trying to only start working with my psychologist now. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's almost like... It's almost like being imprisoned, and yeah. and the and the and the jail key is in the lock. <sighs> yeah, I know. I get it. Listen, and I, I I'm glad you're working on it. I would like to see you get out and about. Um, have you given any thought? I know you have. Mute your, mute your phone. I, it's I know really you have, loud right now. I think there's an airplane flying over. Immune homicide opinion purpura. I am wondering if you've given any thought to Novavax for you, uh, and will, whether that would give. Make, get you to turn that key and leave leave um, get out with us again i would have to really do some research on it in reference to start chronic ID start now through. start now so you're ready to go i think it looks good start now so when it when it's approved you can just do it and get the hell out of there okay you know what i'm saying okay all right i mean I, I'm, as i said i'm going to research it yeah. and take it further but I, I, can i say one more thing and yeah. i think this is very important and um whom in norcasm has been screaming to the the gills on this and i believe you have too why doesn't people know what their antibodies are like i know before you get a third before you get a booster shot Okay. Yeah, I, I think there's that's thinking, what I said. I, again, there's a lot of weirdness in the public health messaging, as I've pointed out over and over and over again. And some of it may be that it's unfair if other people can't pay for it or access it. But I think doctors, my profession again, should be stepping up and urging that. I, I think the additive score is one profile. It's one that it's I use. Expensive it's though, you know. I think it's like two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, I know, but insurance well, have to cover it. No, I don't why don't they, they put an EUA? Why don't they put an EUA? Yeah. Get 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 say a billion dollars, which would be you know for for mass for mass usage, and put it as part of a CBC. 
I, why not? I totally agree with you, Joe. And they're, they're, I'm going to move you to the audience. So we don't have. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> it sounds a, like a plane's going. Yeah, out. but there's a lot of stuff. One guy said it sounds like he's hang gliding. There's a lot of stuff they have and have not done that I find just just bewildering. So I, I'm not behind the closed doors to know what they're really thinking. But it's a lot of bewildering behavior that is nothing like what they are. <laughs> they've been. Uh, they know better. They know better. So something's up. Hi, Christine. Hi. Thank you. Um, I really love your uh, what you say on this uh, this app. But I had a, a couple of questions. Um, one: What is your opinion on natural immunity? Um, in, so, in what sense? Somebody asked that earlier in the program. Yeah, I mean, because like, you know, now that we're seeing, which I think they expected the vaccines to not have um, yeah. a long term yeah. usage. I mean, I mean, I'm I had it in March 2020 hospitalized and I got tested. from. I just want to jump up because someone said antibodies. Yeah. I had antibodies at 18 months, which certainly yeah. is s- surpassing their estimates. Right. Um, so, so the, but, but the commercially available test is really a yes, no test. It's just did you have COVID or don't you? It's really not an antibody screen. You have to get a much more sophisticated screen with neutralizing antibodies and B cell assessment to know what's going on. So if your doctor just did a blood and said, look, you have good antibodies, it doesn't really mean anything. It's better than not, but it, it's not something I could drive deep information from. Uh, but I totally agree with you that we were just saying that we should be following people's antibodies. I follow mine every couple of months. Mine have been crazy elevated. And I've been tested against nuclear capsid protein, spike proteins, parts of the spike protein, neutralizing antibodies, B-cell function, all of it's been off the chart. So my suspicion is, Christine, that some people, hopefully you and like me, will have sustained persistent immunity. And I don't know how long. But knowing you, you'll get it. Yeah, I'll still get it. I'll still get it. And then I won't. Yeah, that does happen to me. But but I, I will not get something severe. My, I have a lot of uh, immunity flying around. Um so I do, you know, I believe that a certain percentage are going to decay over three to six months and a certain percentage are going to persist. And I don't know how to tell who's who because we definitely, other, other than measuring these antibody screens like an additive score, but we do see people that get recurrences, right? And I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be one of those people. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the thing that's frustrating to me is like all the data on breakthrough infections is simply, I mean, at least what's I've. Uh, seen reported is only on people who've been vaccinated yeah, and right. not on people that had COVID prior. No, it's, it's again, obscure, difficult to find. Yeah. I, I don't see it either. Uh, I see people making claims and we do know. You should we, get a passport if you get COVID. Like it should be a year pass, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. But, but here's what we did do know. We do know that antibodies decay in one of three groups after you've had COVID. 30% decay quickly, 30% decay, decay over six, six months, months, and 30% persist. persist. We, we do, do know that. that. Whether, Whether the immunity is all that different amongst the different groups is what we don't know because we really aren't assessing T cell function and B cell readiness and this other stuff to assess. All we know is that the neutralizing, we're really using neutralizing antibodies and total antibody circulating as our sort of threshold that may or may not be the only threshold. So uh, I'm good, but I do know people that have gotten two cases, two bad cases, in fact. So I'm guessing that that those people at decay are now vulnerable, and so they so the, so what the CDC has done with that information and said everybody gets vaccinated, and I'm like, all right, I, it's a not necessary, probably an unnecessary medical procedure for me because I know my antibodies are high, but okay, I did J and J just because I didn't want to take I two got vaccines. A black eye. And I had a bad reaction to it. <laughs> but now there's some data that uh, the J&J, for those of us that have had COVID, is the superior vaccine against variants, against variants. The, Dr. Nock and I are going to talk about that tomorrow. He sent me a study on that. And uh, I was delighted to see it <laughs> because I didn't like. But now we're going to maybe need a and j booster in order to move about in the world. I don't know. Uh, so much of this is bureaucratic. So much of it is not good science, Christine. I'm sure you're aware. Um, so to try to make good science out of it is a very frustrating experience. Dr. Nock is coming doctors, tomorrow at 12 p.m. Doctors have ceded their responsibility to bureaucrats. And it's 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 a kind of a wild thing. I've never seen anything like it. Thank uh, you so much. You bet. 
Uh, you're thinking clearly about this, though. So, Susan, i got to wrap this thing up. I still have hands up. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not going to be able to get to everybody. I know. This we'll was do this. A... Tomorrow we're going to be back with Dr. Knox, so yeah, we can take th- some more questions. This was intentionally going to be a very short check-in and just uh, take some calls and see what's up with everybody. Um, Andrew Ashkazvili, it was good to see you here on the stream. You gave me some good information, most of it you reassuring, I think. Um, although you said one thing. Let me remember what it was. It kind of rocked me a little bit. Let me see if I can find it. Andrew. Thanks for the blue hearts, Myra. It's better um, than those stupid ducks. Oh God, another oh. duck! I have to kill it. The <laughs> ducks, the, the ducks look like snakes on the restream, but they're actually ducks. Do I have? Um, and whenever somebody says duck, it means they're calling you a quack. Somebody asked if there's a so I'm removing recommendation for PTSD Sorry. and uh, anxiety and panic. Yes, uh, and trauma. Maybe yeah, get, it's a snake. Get the trauma but it looks therapy. like a duck to me. EMDR. EMDR is something really good for that. Uh, Andrew, I lost your comment there. You were saying something about something that was coming. And now I don't see it. Maybe you can re... Uh, I don't think those are ducks, Susan, by the way. I think you're being... They're snakes or ducks. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yes, you'll be coming up in May. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like a they're snake snakes. or a foot. It looks they're like a ducks. foot. Oh, I thought they called Trish a snake, which was so mean. It was mean. It's bullshit. Uh, you Stephen, just leave your Stephen, negativity great. at the door. I, I didn't insinuate that. I stated it in no uncertain terms. And this, I think, is a good policy for all of us to follow. What's that? Which is... Um, Hang on a second. Yes, Kelly Gallagher, I'm going to have Ethan in here if he'll come. Um, but I, I'll state it again, which is that if you think, as soon as you believe you know everything about this virus, just know that you don't. In mm-hmm. other words, certainty and, and absolute confidence in your opinion should be avoided. Things are very fluid, very uncertain, and you can certainly have a good, solid opinion about something, but please don't believe certainty. Certainty is almost always going to be flawed or problematic given the, given how things are moving all right i have to run and i thank you for everything for you guys stopping by i'm going to end the uh, clubhouse room we appreciate you guys i'm sorry i couldn't get to everybody we'll see you here. tomorrow at noon we'll see you tomorrow at noon with dr knock should be a very interesting conversation and uh those of you uh look at some of these these uh, sort of weird images that people are able to put up here it's amazing <laughs> Uh, thank you, Zach. Mommies I know it's fine. Lots of mommies on the stream today. I just we're probably gonna get censored on YouTube anyway. All right. So. Any event. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you tomorrow at noon with Dr. Knock. Anyone who's watched me over the years knows that I'm obsessed with Hydrolyte. In my opinion, the best oral rehydration product on the market. I literally use it every day. My family uses it. When I had COVID, I'm telling you, Hydrolyte contributed to my recovery, kept me hydrated. Now, with things finally reopening back around the country, the potential exposure to the common cold is always around. And like always, Hydrolyte has got your back. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity, my new favorite, starts with their fast-absorbing electrolytes and adds a host of great ingredients. Plus, each single-serving easy-pour drink mix contains 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 300 milligrams of elderberry extract. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity comes in convenient, easy-to-pour sticks that rapidly dissolve in water, make a great-tasting drink, has 75% less sugar than your typical sports drink, uses all natural flavors, gluten-free, dairy-free, caffeine-free, non-GMO, and even vegan. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity is also now available in ready-to-drink bottles at the Walmart next to the pharmacy, or as always, you can find it by visiting hydrolyte.com slash Dr. Drew. Again, that is H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash D-R-D-R-E-W. Be sure to use the code Dr. Drew 25 for a special discount. I'm here with my daughter Paulina to share an exciting new project. Over the years, we've talked to a ton of young people about what they really want to know about relationships. It's difficult to know who you are and what you want, Mm. especially as a teenager. And not everyone has access to an expert in their house like I did. Of course, it wasn't like I was always that receptive to that advice. Right, no kidding. But now we have written the book on consent. It is called It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward, and it explores relationships, romantic relationships, and sex. It's a great guide for teens, parents, and educators to go beyond the talk and have honest and meaningful conversations. It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward will be on sale September 21st. You can order your book anywhere books are sold, Mm -hmm. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and of course, your independent local bookstore. Links are available on drdrew.com. So clearly the book will help people, well, raise awareness, obviously, and then get that conversation going early so more people can can notice this and spread the word of positivity about healthy relationships. So if you can, we would love your support by pre-ordering now. Totally. And as we said before, this is a book that both teenagers and their parents should read. 
Read the book, have the conversation. It doesn't have to be awkward. On sale September 21st.